didn't even hear the intro. No thumbs up. Thumbs up. Didn't even get to hear the intro, so I've been waiting all season two to hear it. Mm. Not so tender podcast season two. <laughs> Holy shit! How was your summer, Kelly? <laughs> Just kidding. We're not gonna get to that yet. <laughs> no. Season two. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been realizing we don't say that enough. So uh, down there and su- subscribe, I think, is I over here. One. Well, mine's over, oh. over here and then like it and all that shit and <laughs> share it. Um, we took some time off for the summer. Um, we're back. We have a lot of new. The set's new. Looks new. I don't know if you notice. It's not the same. If you listen to it, maybe check it out on YouTube's. Or the uh, the ticks to the talks. <laughs> um, but we changed the set. We've been working on some stuff. We took in some questionnaires that we took from people that watched the podcast and listened to it. And we're going to apply some of them. Other ones, fuck off. We're not changing anything because you're dumb. <laughs> <clears throat> Especially people who don't watch podcasts that want to tell me how to do a podcast. It's fucking hilarious. Um, you had those people? I, they're like, well, I don't really watch podcasts, but I think you should do that. I'm like, well, that's cool. weird. Super weird. So anyways. Do your research. <laughs> how was your week, Kelly? School just started. School started. My kids are back. Yeah. Hallelujah. You like them being in school? They like being in school, I'm sure. They do. Yeah. 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 I'm going through the at-home mom summer transition, though, oh, of getting what do I do situated. with, yeah. Yeah. I'm Two sure a lot of people struggle with that, A huh? week I'm home. Yeah, I'm sure. Do you have clients right now that are like, I don't know what to do? Yeah. Really? Clean your house, lady. I have clients right now that like cry. Cry? Cry. I do too. Yeah. That they're like, because I don't, I'm hurting I them. don't, <laughs> no. But they're like, I don't know what to do. I haven't had anybody cry in a while. Have... Really? Yeah, they don't cry because I'm tattooing them. They cry because they're just having an emotional moment. Yeah. It's okay. No. I always tell I them, I'm like, you, you are the first one, but you will likely not be the last one based on like my agenda yeah. for the day. 100%. But, Cry all you want. Get it out. Yeah. Sometimes you got to cry, no. right? Fall is super hard for people. If we... Oh, if, yeah. If you guys go back and watch season one, like we talked about how summer elevates people's moods. Yeah. And and gets them going first of the year, new year, new me, into spring and into, you know, hot boy summer, hot girl <laughs> summer. Yeah. People, people are hooking up and getting into relationships. And now... They're planning for Christmas. Uh, yeah. Well... And like, are you meeting my family? No. Yeah. Well, if we're not meeting family, like, what are we doing? Like, are we it's, serious? it is the second half of the year where people look for commitment and do temperature checks. And Oof. it, yeah, it's, it gets rough. It's hard. It's hard. My caseload is, is generally pretty sad and or confused right now. It's hard. Fall is my least favorite time of year. Always has Everybody been. hates you right now. But everybody goes, oh my God, I love, I love fall. I love fall. I don't think they do. I think they're trying to tell mm. themselves that. Maybe some people do. They love pumpkin spice for sure. Mm. Um, it's probably my least favorite part of fall. Yeah. <laughs> Look, now they hate me too. I know, right? Don't <laughs> say that. She was joking. Sorry, I'm totally just joking. <laughs> she loves that shit. Totally yeah. your basic white girl. I yeah. love Uggs and pumpkin I had, spice. You know, I had pumpkin spice uh, <laughs> white chocolate pretzels the other day. Mm. And they were really good. They were subtle. It was subtle. I, it wasn't crazy. I don't like anything pumpkin. No. Mm-mm. That's all right. So, uh, fall's coming. My one friend says, don't ever date a girl after Halloween. He says, wait until after Valentine's Day. You don't want to date anybody through the holidays. Mm-mm. It's Why? too soon. Because it's too soon to be invested in all that crap. Too much pressure? Yeah, because then you got to go see their family. You got to buy them a mm-hmm. gift. You got to do all this shit. Okay. I don't know. I, I mean, I can I say definitely if you need somebody see and you it. dig them, hang out with them. What's the yeah, worst that's going to happen? Right. I'm gonna, Lots I, of things. Maybe because I'm close with my family. So yeah. I feel like that's a decent default. It's like I'm not... Like I, we just started dating or just started talking. So like, I'm going to see my family. You do you. Why can't you bring a new person to your family though? I don't know. My family has never been that way. I heard a fucked up story the other day that this lady, she got a divorce and she hasn't dated in years. Mm-hmm. You know, her kids in her mid twenties, graduated college, all that shit. And all of a sudden she starts talking to this guy and 
you know, they're they're all cute. They're talking all the time, you know, because that's what you do when you first start, sure. you know. And then they kind of something happens. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but the one sister goes, listen, if you get back together with him, he's not welcome at our house. I was like, you don't even know him. Like. If somebody said that to me, I'd be like, cool. Even if I wasn't dating them, they're like, why aren't you coming over for Thanksgiving? I'm like, well, I'm dating Chuck again. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I'm not even dating Chuck, you know, just to avoid the house. Like, who would do that to their sister? Lots of people probably, right? Yeah. No, That's it's, shitty. Can we talk about, let's talk about that. Okay. We, don't, we don't have a subject. Here's our subject. Sure. This is our first show of the season. So we just mm-hmm. kind of get reacquainted for the season, people. So then we start doing some, mm-hmm. some real digging right now but what would you say when families get involved very quickly into who you're dating like they want you to date but then you date and they try to control it so there that is a common denominator in in therapy is either it's they have like some sort of like standard timeline like you're not meeting anybody until three months six months nine (laughs) months a year two years like whether that be your children your parents your siblings whatever so that that's pretty common. And then there's always like the narrative of my parents will either be overly critical. They can never be happy for me or my parents will be so gung ho because they want grandchildren that like it makes it awkward. It does or, make it awkward when you keep having conversations sure. about somebody ejaculating in you. That or I, you know, I know you're weird about people's sex lives. <laughs> but like then siblings or friends can Sometimes they're like the jaded one, you know, like oh, they, they can't. I won't date a girl who's got a mean friend who hates men. Nope. Yep. Nope. I don't oh, want nothing or a to sister, do with them. A sister might even be worse. I try to get only children. <laughs> Thomas. I, I the, wish that wasn't true. They're the, but it, it they're the worst, though. Forgive no, me. they're not. Yes, they do are. Do you think only children are the worst? Absolutely. Well, they're not really only children. They have other siblings just from not that union. Yeah. No, actually, they're well, not really every. Do you think just a single only children with no other siblings is the worst? This is um, brave. Oh, walk it back. Uh, I know. So I believe very strongly <laughs> in birth order, and so. so I, if you're the only child, are you the first and the last? If you're the only child, you organically don't know how to share. You don't know how to take turns. You don't know how to put other people's needs in head of, ahead of yours or how to collaborate or how to compromise. Yeah, I or, wouldn't like, say that. Well, I mean, she has younger siblings. People, I, I'm trying to think people I've been yeah. with that are, they have other little siblings, so they're fine. Yeah. No. I don't know. You think you're a shitty person or you're not. I mean, your birth order probably has something to do with it, especially when you have other siblings. But Yeah. No, that, I, yeah. I mean, just because I think my schooling was so heavily focused on, like, systemics. So, like... yeah. I'm oldest, I'm oldest female. So like stereotypically, there's a super high bar, like surprisingly higher than most oldest male. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you naturally are given or take on like a motherly figure. Yeah. As opposed to like, yeah, 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 sure. My, I mean, my grandson, he takes really good care of his little brother. Yep. He loves him, man. Yeah. So he picks out his clothes. Mm-hmm. He helps him get dressed. He's he's a great yep. big brother, man. We're lucky. Yeah, I think when families get involved, I think that's a huge thing in a lot of relationships because sometimes you'll stay with somebody just out of spite because mm, of somebody to close to you. Wrong. Yeah, because yeah. you know, don't tell me what to do. Right. You know. Or I'll, I'll be damned if you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And people stay I'll in relationships a lot yep. longer than they should, and I'm not just that. If you come to your family constantly with problems, mm. well, that's going to lead. How do you expect them to be nice to them at Thanksgiving? You know, I mean, that's hard. I, we've I, talked about we, that. We before, have. We've like, talked about that. I've talked to clients about that. And I have a person in my personal life right now that I'm like, I, it's really hard for me to like your partner. Right. Well, because you tell me on a daily shit. basis or every other day, you are calling me. I mean, best case scenario, bitching, worst case scenario, like crying. Like I, I don't like them. I don't like them for you. And it sucks because you're getting one side of it. Sure. Yeah. You know, you're getting one side of it. And then they're like, why are you being weird about blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you told me that you did this, this, and this, and this. Right. Yeah. Like like I'm now texting you asking if like, you're okay. Are you safe? Like not, not that I assume that they're, 
that you're unsafe, but like you're planting seeds in my head as a clinician. So like, I always kind of like take a step back and be like the average person who, who maybe doesn't have the skills to stop their thinking errors or stop from catastrophizing would have the police at your door. In that cry wolf shit. Yeah. You know, and that makes people less empathetic towards you. And it makes people really just go, they throw their hands up like, I can't Mm -hmm. fucking help you. Yeah. You know, and that gets, I don't think people realize that too, because I think the only time they got attention sometimes when they're young, well, I'm asking, Mm -hmm. I don't know why I said I think, because I don't really know, but I would assume that if the way you got attention as a young person is by being hurt or being in trouble, Mm. you would continue that as an adult with your friends and, and other people, because that's the only way people rally behind you. Like you need somebody to rally behind you. Yeah. That's fair. So again, I, I would argue that it, my, I guess my theology like focuses on birth order. So like if you are constantly in need and in high demand of support in any capacity, that, that could trickle through Right. that either I'm doing super phenomenal, but I need reassurance or validation or I'm constantly struggling. A lot of the younger in birth order, if you think about the babies, <coughs> usually I'm the baby. Well, no offense. <laughs> I don't even know what you're going to say. It might but be like offensive. the, the babies tend to be higher need, but not always get their needs met. So either they while out or they kick and scream and they either get their needs met or they kind of get their back turned and they're like, they either figure it out on their own or they, I'm trying to think of like it catered to or enabled the youngest people I know. And in my family, we, I mean, I definitely was kind of left to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Your parents tired. Well, they had a lot going on in their personal life. You know, my mom was a single mom and my brother and sister were, definitely putting her through the paces as yep. young as teenagers mm-hmm. and I you know she just knew that I would make reasonable decisions and I did it most times and sometimes I really didn't because you know obviously I got a girl right. pregnant at a very young age so that but really, did she even know no it like that no. that's the thing I was like, feral. You yeah know, but my mom loves me and my mom was a good mom well, but sure. like but yeah. you know in that it doesn't take long for a 16 year old boy to fuck up no you know hours <laughs> yeah. And we didn't have Minutes. the internet. Okay. <laughs> so well, I didn't have this, I didn't have I had a rotary phone. Right. And I still was able to get a girl pregnant at a very young age. Yeah. Um but I man. I don't know. I just know that when you, you're seeking it out, like going back to what we originally were talking about, when your sister's saying, you know, if you talk to him he's not welcome. Well that's saying that your sister's not welcome there. Like I, I could understand mm-hmm. if he was beating her. I could understand. Like I don't know the whole situation, but sure. I'm gonna assume it was premature. And it just in, it sat with me funny. Cases, yeah, you know. And I was just like, why? Why would you say that to someone? Older sibling? No. Not, no. You don't know. I don't or think so. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Close. Even if not, they're yeah. close. Sometimes people. What I've thing. noticed, yeah, sometimes people, they pick their hill that they want to die on, right? And they're like, that's my hill. I'm not going to stand for infidelity. I'm not going to stand for, right. A- insert literally any conflict topic. But do you think she's saying it because it makes her feel like she's advocating for her sister too? Maybe. I would say one of two things. Either she's advocating for herself, her siblings, or like s- likely her parents. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, like... It it does, in my clinical belief, stem from somewhere. Most people don't just like decide one day that they're like offended by things. <laughs> so like, <laughs> well, they do if just, they saw it on the internet. Well, maybe, Suddenly, but like even that is like a mustard seed real. that's planted that then culminates yeah. into it's something. Hard to grow so mustard. right. I've not, have you ever grown mustard? No. I, <laughs> I find myself buying a new mustard every, every like, time. holiday. I'm actually almost out of mustard. <laughs> That's the only time I use it. I had some oh, good yeah. mustard the other day, mm. though, on a corn dog. Mm. It's pretty good. But yeah, so like, I guess my thought is, if she said, he's not welcome here, one of a couple things happened. It could have been that that individual exhausted her ear. Yeah. That was like, I doubt going, going time after time after time after time. And I will say, even as a 
moderately emotionally intelligent therapist. Sometimes I, I get burnout that I'm like, it's, it is getting really hard to yeah. empathize and have compassion to somebody who is hurting somebody who is dear to they've me on a talking. consistent basis. Like I, right. I think they've only been talking for a couple of months. So yeah. I don't think that, I understand that too. Yeah, Cause if sure. somebody keeps telling you the same shit over and the over same again, stuff over and over and over and over and yeah. go about your chores that you put them on speaker. And yeah. I have done that to, yeah. to people who I truly care about that. I'm like, I can't, I'm lucky. Man, I'll be honest. I really don't have any people like that in my life right now. I usually don't. I have one. I have one or two right now, which is out of character for them. Yeah. But I, I had COVID last week, and I was on. I had COVID. Justin had COVID. Twenty twenty three. Justin did too. Out of the- did you get it from Beyonce, Jay? He's gonna talk. <laughs> Where did you get COVID, Justin? Oh, I'm kidding. He didn't get it from Beyonce. It was a Just joke. Kidding. No, he's crew around me- a lot. Crew of member. I'm kidding. Not from Beyonce. He got sick way after Beyonce. Stevie Nicks. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He didn't get it from any of those people. Listen, I don't go anywhere or do anything. And somehow I got it. That's I was crazy. super sick and then I got better and then I tested positive. So anyway, how I, sick were you? Um, Did you get COVID the first time? I did. So actually almost two years to the day. So my birthday was Sunday. Today is Tuesday. I so said happy birthday. I know. I'm, t- I'm telling the, nas- mm-hmm. <laughs> the nation, the world. The world. The world. My birthday, my second annual 36th birthday was two days ago. Nice. <laughs> but anyway, two years ago, my husband and I went away for like a rock festival for the weekend and i was convinced i got covid after crowd surfing through covid in 2021 i'd imagine you're either pregnant or covid well (laughs) thank god for covid yeah real second (laughs) base right so yeah like that was almost two years ago exactly so this is my second time testing positive i got you i was super super sick for like 36 hours jay was sick for what four days Four days. Yeah. He was sick. He scared me. So when you wonder why it took so long for us to get back on air, these people were sick. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So that, I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I'm glad you're feeling better. (laughs) Um, I've been talking to a lot of people about what's the most important thing to them in a relationship still. Mm. And I'm still amazed with their answers. It still is baffling (laughs) me. Yeah. Well, no, I did have a girl the other day or last week and she says, she wants uh, like vulnerability from him. She wants to see that from mm. him. And we, she was, did you say, tell me more? Yes. What's that look like? Yes, What's exactly. that look like for you? And we talked more about it. And when I asked her, I said, well, why is that so important to you? And she really struggled to say it. Mm. And, and it, but she was emotionally like intelligent and you could tell that Pretty she aware. was like, yeah. why am I asking for that? And I said, I can tell you why most men are afraid to give it to you. <laughs> and, Do uh, share. Yeah. Well, men are afraid to give it to you because you could very easily weaponize it and use it against us because we've had people do that to us before. It's hard enough for us to share it and feel vulnerable. Who and has be done vulnerable. it? To me? I, I, like, well, I'm like in general. So I only have a, a woman's. Yeah. experience well, and so i'm I'm genuinely had, curious right i have definitely had men that say you know i shared this one thing and every time there's an issue she has to bring this up and make mm. me feel bad about it or make me feel like i'm less than i know a guy that was sexually abused and she fucking brought that up in a fight mm. and i was like i guess that's like so when i when my clinical brain goes to like worst case scenario i go to like abuse or abandonment Right. And like, obviously there's more, but like off the top of my head, like those are the two most common things that could be weaponized. And mo- most of the time, that's not the reason for the issue. Like people hold that tried and true, but like bring up everything other than that. And All people right. who weaponize like Oof. and go for the jugular, I was like, that's a what? whole nother level. And yeah. like, it's not that it's unheard of. Well, why would I want to share anything with you that, that no. if every time things aren't going your way, 
you're going to bring that up and make me feel like, well, I'm not sharing anything with you. Mm, yeah. I've, I've definitely dealt with things that like, where I, I'm doing better at vocalizing when someone does some things to me like that. Not necessarily that, but you want me to act a certain way and then I do it mm-hmm. and then you try to like make me feel bad for it or you make a shitty comment about it. Mm. And I've learned to like actually say something now where before I'd be like, ball it up, throw it away, who cares? Now I'm like, why Why would you say that? Yeah. You well, know, it's right. hard to do. You know, it wasn't easy yeah. to do. But like, yeah. why would you say that? And I've noticed that like talking through it and I've... I'm In the to, moment? You yeah. say, are you are you getting to the point where you can be like, oh, yeah. hey, that no. wasn't... I had nothing to lose anymore. Yeah, like I mean, that's honestly, hitting below the belt. When you have nothing to lose yeah. and you have no... That's a way to learn. You're wrong. I mean, like, and that, it's a yeah. sucky, shitty way to learn, but it is a way to learn that yeah. like... Uh, I've, I've, you know, pulled back all my defenses and like that, or I've, I've exerted all of my defense. Like, this is all I got. All I got. Why would you do that to me? So I've had moments where I've, you know, I mean, if you watch the last season, you can see my entire life unfold yeah. in real time yeah. and things You're that I learned about myself. Last season. Yeah, yeah. And things that I'm learning about myself, but I'm also learning this. And this is like the catch 22 for men. Girls don't want sissies. They want tough Mm-mm. ass dudes. That's true. They want men. I, I have so learned you, that this this break, yeah. it it has been a whole like recalibration for me of like, oh, so we we're confusing. Like and like I know we're confusing, but like breaking PSA. news. PSA tonight, <laughs> Northeast Ohio. Tonight on the night, not so tender podcast. Holy women are shit. confusing, but like we want vulnerability. The fuck does that and, even mean? I say we, as somebody who identifies as female, like we want vulnerability, but we also don't want weakness. And what I do think our society has done is equate the two, which yeah. is well, our is grandfather not, swung too hard the other way. Yeah. You can have a little bit of both, but I'll be honest, if you had to pick one or the other... You wouldn't prefer the vulnerable. Well, I saw I saw a whole documentary the other day. It, well, the other day, a couple weeks ago, about how in the U.S., like culturally, we raise young boys to become men, but the description of men is what to not be. Don't be weak. Don't be emotional. Don't cry. Don't this. Don't that. And we don't tell them what to be. Like, what is a man? Oh, I... Trust me, I got a whole conversation right. about all this shit. Right. So we just say like, hey, don't be this. But then additionally, the things that we e- equate to being not manly are feminine. Nobody explains anything. Everything don't is... Don't be these things. No, I... I, <laughs> I I've been, oh, episode I've had an angry two, summer. everybody. I have had an angry summer because <laughs> I been, have had the most awakening summer. Oof. I'm so frustrated because people talk about like when I ask people and they go, "Well, are we good relationships about communication?" And I go, "What does that mean?" And they they stutter. They have nothing. And I go, "You can't even communicate to me." Yeah, no, and I, I don't live with you. I'm not dealing with your family. I'm not dealing with your friends or your kids. If you can't communicate to me about what it even means. It's the corniest shit I've ever heard. And I literally believe that the least amount of work we put into something and we want the biggest results. And I've been talking to people and they just look at me like, oh my God, I've never had anybody tell this to me. And I'm like, so when you say communication, why do you need this communication? What, what, what does it mean what, to what, you? Yeah. Okay, so communication could mean a lot of different things. Yeah. Communication be like, hey, I'm going here. Don't worry about me. Because some people really worry where someone's at. Sure. I have a lot here. of anxiety, I'm a going lot here, of baby. fear. I'll be fear. back. Yes. Right, yeah. Just so you're okay. There's some way to, you know, communicate about stuff. But then there's also like, do you want communication so you have power over that person? Because that's mm-hmm. creepy. That's abusive. Okay? Control. Right. But control, there's, there's a difference there. Because like this is a huge, at, as a clinician, as I continue to treat individuals, children, teenagers, couples... I have a caseload. I think my youngest is 12. My oldest is probably mid 50s off the top of my head. And about half are couples. The other half are like individuals. But even those half are men and women. Like, I mean, it's a very diverse caseload right now, which I love. I love. But it everybody's 
goals are different. And so when they say like communication, I'm like, what is that? What is, I don't even know. They can't even tell you. Tell me. Do they tell you? Mm, Barely. Most most of them can't. Okay. So ready? If you have children and you're talking about my relationships, you have grandchildren and you think you're, you're like helping them. Like, you know, good relationships about communication. Ask them, what do you think that means? And you ask yourself, what does that mean? Before you tell them some shit like that. Mm. It's like saying, be a good patriot. What does that mean? <laughs> it's such a blanketed, oh, that generic, is. it's it's like, well, send then, prayers. What the fuck's that mean? You don't know. I mean, yeah, like, right, honestly, listen. like, you're not being specific and you want good goals. Which you can't even explain it. I get so pissed. I think, well, so... In a society that is so heavily focused on mental health, which is, I mean, theoretically phenomenal. Sounds great. Sounds fantastic. Every single couple that comes to me, or I would say, indiv- I would, I mean, 90% of like my caseload says I need to work on communication. What they're always focusing, and I will use like an absolute, like always focusing on is how they can communicate their feelings effectively to somebody else, which is yes. like a third, a third. Most people at this point, like over the summer, I've realized like it's again, if you refer back to like last season, like relationships are not 50, 50, it's a hundred, a hundred communication. Isn't that way either. Like, it's not just about you expressing yourself effectively it is, I would say, 50% minimally dependent on how they hear you. So every single person on my caseload right now, intake gets I statements I, I have created. And I like I don't want to pretend like I've like recreated the wheel. I'm sure it's very similar to things that other people have yeah. created. But like a complex I statement, like I feel blank when blank semicolon (laughs) and I would feel blank if blank so like it's change culture yeah can I as as well as a reflective listing statement so like if you and I were talking you might say like hey I'm really disappointed that I came home after working 10 hours and the dishes are in the sink still I would appreciate it if someone Right. Not me, and like that's not passive aggressive, but like if someone could do the dishes before ten p.m., right? That, that would make me that feel they that, made. Yeah, right. I would then say, in a lot of situations, I hear you're pissed when the dishes aren't done, and and you and you would be prompted to say that's not that is not what I said. I'm yeah. not pissed. Yeah. I'm just I I'm disappointed, or I feel disrespected, or I feel taken advantage of, like. A lot of things. A it's lot. irritated or whatever. A lot of things. And so I send I statements, reflective listening statements, and, and an emotional grid. I found the most fantastic emotional, emotional grid. grid. So it has, name. <laughs> it has eight or nine different emotional columns, like <laughs> categories. Like when you go to the doctor and you're hurting. Yeah, with like the emoji. Yeah. Right. But so here's why I like it. It has... Different emotional columns. So it's like happiness, sadness, anger, confusion, whatever. And then in addition to columns, it has rows. So like high intensity, moderate intensity, and low in- so intensity. So one to three. So that you can, you can effectively and accurately. That is really a grid. I, right. Like, yeah. so if I, if I don't have a lot of emotional vocabulary, I might walk in and be like, you guys freaking piss me off. But like piss is a high intensity word For some. versus like some means that you're drunk, <laughs> right? Well, like versus like irked, like yeah. it, it. I'm irked that there's it doesn't matter 47, how you say it to somebody. You could right, say it nice sure. as hell to somebody. It doesn't matter. Some people it doesn't matter. You could hand it to them on a silver platter well, and be as kind as you can be about it, and they don't react in a good way. That is why communication is is two sided. So like when you when you hear people say I just want to work on communication, do they mean I'll tell you they, what they can't you identify? You ready? Or their partner isn't hearing no, it? No, I'm going to tell you what people think is communication. I'm sure you already know this. We'll tell you people what y'all think communication <laughs> is. You think communication is talking to your mate and telling them what their fucking problem is, 
and that you communicated what you need and what they should do. That's not communication. Communication explaining them what it looks like for you to make it better. And are you even justified in that act? Mm. And is it even possible? Stop getting frustrated at people because they don't understand you. How about figure out a way to speak to them like you would someone who couldn't speak your language or someone who was deaf or someone who was blind to explain something to somebody or make them understand it or a a child who can't really communicate. You wouldn't just throw your hands up in the air and give up. But you don't give the same grace to the person you want to marry and love and trust and want to protect your brand, but you don't give them the same grace. You'll say that you explained it to them, and I'm a good communicator because I explained it to you. Well, if I don't understand it, and I'm, I, I can understand a lot of things, but there's some things that don't quite make me understand them just because you said them. Mm. So if you're just barking out things and thinking that's communication, until someone understands you and goes, I've never seen it that way. I worked on communication very hard this summer, and there were some huge breakthroughs in it for me. And I sat back with that person, and we were like, wow, that actually makes more sense. But it wasn't the first time explaining it to them or them explaining it to me that we got it. And there's a lot of frustrating moments in that. Yeah. But not giving up on that and just going, well, they're a fucking idiot because I told them what I needed. And I told them, like boundaries. We're going to talk about boundaries, too. Y'all can take some boundaries and fuck off with them. Just to let you know, because you watch TikTok and you think boundaries are dope. Aww, I'm going to tell you what boundaries, Thomas, what so I realized. Oof. <laughs> Dark summer. So listen, when you have boundaries, you think it's for other people? No, you have to react when they fucking fail you because you're more than likely giving them a boundary they're never going to fucking keep. So remember that when you set a boundary and they don't keep it, you better keep your end of it. Because that's truly who you're setting that boundary for is your response to their fuck up or their well, yeah, lack of right. keeping your boundary. Nobody yeah. talks about that. No. Well, so I have talked about that a lot this summer or I guess reiterated and reframed it to multiple people that you can only set your your own boundaries. And that sounds so cliche and so simple, but... But that's not what they're picking up on TikTok. I know. But like in relationships, and I can speak to clinical relationships that are on my caseload or people in the past or personal references or like my own marriage or my ex marriage. Like it's you get to decide what your boundaries are. And if challenged, then your job, your commitment, we've talked about that. Your commitment is to compare your boundaries to your partners and find out where the overlapping gaps are. And there has to be a follow through. Yeah. Right. So there could be compromise. There could. There should be. That Maybe. within. I'm saying. Sure. You shouldn't like, be married to someone that you literally can't compromise things. Right. That is bonkers. And you want to raise children or build a house together? Sure. Well, but like, I mean, I guess playing devil's advocate, I have people who have both, maybe not, like I have a couple right now who has not had any physical infidelity. But one partner engaged in some sort of like murky emotional something. Like with a frog? No. It's getting weird. I like murky. I've never heard murky. I like that because you're like, it sounds dirty and it's gross. Yeah. Well, like it's. <laughs> I was like murky. It's like muddy. I got you. It, they, I, <laughs> like, it's not sexual or romantic, but it's more than friends. And so think of somebody like my, my personal best friend is more than a sister less than a lover, but like more than like your best friend, you know, like I don't, yeah. it's, it's she falls in a whole different category. Yeah. So I have a couple right now that has recently been working through partner A's emotional experience and trying to backtrack and identify and kind of put their finger on it while still very committed to their partner And just recently, partner B was like, oh, shit, I was super salty about this situation. But like, I have also kind of recognized how you can have emotional feelings towards somebody while not having any desire to move forward or act on those things. You mean to have like a romantic any right. And they partner B is very much like I am sexually and romantically potentially 
attracted to this person, but they're, they're communicating with their partner and saying like, listen, they must not have guns. I, in their house. <laughs> Holy they, shit. It is as a clinician, Thomas, it is so actually freaking mind blowing as well as like refreshing to be able to sit for 53 to 55 minutes and be like, so you're both not comfy. Like it's not, it's not but a you're sense talking of comfort. about it. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I mean, right. like, honestly, like, I got they, a little scared for him. Sure. I, I got scared for both of them <laughs> that I was like, I'm sorry. And any, any Murder. other relationship that I have ever seen blood would be shed. Yeah. I don't know in what capacity. I don't know if you're going to poke him with a pen Something. or if she's going to paper cut you or like whatever. Something's like, but happen. like, but they were both, it was beautiful That's in that rare. capacity that I was like, all right, so we have three options. We can work it out. We can end it or we can explore something in the middle. And yeah. I do think that our culture is growing and developing to be able to kind of turn away generationally and kind of look at the, the gray yeah. The dark gray, the light gray. Well, like you're being honest. To, yeah. That's but why that's I think hard. people strive so hard to have control all over other people's because they don't know what's going on in their head because they already know how flawed they are. They're not flawed. How much their mind wanders and they, they're so afraid that their mate is doing the same thing. Right. But why can't, why, and I am not, I'm not pro monogamy or against monogamy, but it is. It is unfortunate. This is the first couple that I have been able to clinically work with to say, we meet every two weeks. If we have door one that is staying together exclusively, door two that is breaking, breaking things off and separating because we want different things or we recognize different things or door three, I was like one, two, C (laughs) door three that is even exploring the idea of something different. This is the first couple that I have had. That's like, why don't we pause? Cause we could both jump to conclusions, but I want to make sure both parties were like, I want to make sure their needs are met and my needs are met and right. that we are committed to whatever door. So by default, they almost picked three. Not that that's what they wanted. Because they actually love each other. Yeah, but they're like, let's, we have time. That timeline We're married, we're committed. We, like, what is... That timeline shit makes me mental, man. Two weeks, three months, six months. Like, How long are you going to wait? Or how long would you work on something? I said until until I've exhausted things. Well, you should tell that person that, and I'm like, I look at them and go, what fucking planet does that work on? Well, Timelines I mean, have been a consistent thing for me this summer. Oh, Clinically, what, consistent. It's like, okay, like, good luck. When's your kid going to walk? When's your kid going to, you know, yeah. be able to go to the bathroom by himself? Like, it, it's, I'm so frustrated with humans right now because of their <laughs> reactions and their selfishness, their continued selfishness of not being able to cope, not being able to deal with things and mm-hmm. putting it off on someone else to jump through hoops. It's like, I feel like it's like this. Dance for me. Well, what kind of dance? I don't know, just fucking dance. No, not that one. Keep dancing. Well, what would you prefer? No, 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 keep fucking... That's what it feels like when people mm. are, are doing that shit to people. Yeah. They're demanding things without any explanation of what they actually need because they don't know what they need. They're being selfish yeah, little have, children walking yeah. through a buffet eating until they're bloated and still not happy mm. or full. Does that make sense? It does. It just makes me sad. It makes me fucking sad because no, I have people. Experience this oh, yeah. Well, it's just brutal because I hear these people talking and I'm like, you're doing this to a mate and you're being nicer to me than you probably are to them. You oh, know? yeah. I mean, I have I I had a very blessed summer personally. Hashtag I, blessed. Well, like personally, I struggled. You and I had talked yeah. about that and I don't, I don't know how, how deep into that we'll get this season, but I'm sure the more we drink by <laughs> episode nine, clinically, <laughs> I had what I would identify as a very transparent and honest summer. I'm, I am very blessed. Hashtag blessed Hashtag to blessed. have a good 
insightful and or motivated caseload right now to be able to come weekly. I have a couple people that come twice a week, every other week, once a month. Like, stop it. Are you serious? It's been a long summer. (laughs) Got some jokes there. Mike was going to do it. I saw him. Mike was like, oh, there's a joke I there. Don't, twice a week? I don't know that we could hashtag blessed. I don't know. For some people. You're asking people to be twice a year. Twice in two years. Oh, okay. Well, that's a whole years. other episode because that was another. Holy shit. I also like, t- I did some research this summer. Oh, shit. <laughs> Took some inventory. But anyway. God damn it. Yeah, I What know. were we talking about? You were talking about hashtag blessed. <laughs> You have some clients that are coming twice a week and really working on stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's what I was saying is some people are super motivated and I have been able to see a lot of growth and a lot of awareness and a lot of people say like, and growth and awareness does not always equal happy, healthy couples. Oh, no. They're probably going to break up. (laughs) And well, and that has been a hard realization, but I... I feel super successful as a clinician almost when I help people come to the realization that like we're wrap it up. We're not compatible or this is over. And I know I talked last season, about like it's not my job to save your marriage or your relationship. Also not my job to break it up a little bit, but it's not. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Not not like, listen, I am adding my second clinician to my practice, like in the next month or two. Nice follow me no shit. <laughs> but hashtag bless <laughs> hashtag bless but my <laughs> stop it oh fuck hashtag not blessed you don't stop it i'm joking oh my God. kind of but a fucking summer listen i did get to ride my bike four times this year oh my god that's it my goal this summer was to help people independently realize where they're at. And often that meant taking a step back. And that could be taking a step back and realizing that they love their partner and yeah. want and want to work on things. I or love when people a work st- on things. Yeah. Because even if it doesn't work out, at least they're learning how to move through things. And they're actually... I'm very frustrated with parents and grandparents too that don't show their kids how to gracefully go through a breakup or gracefully treat one another and then Ugh. they wonder why their kids are such pieces of shit. Is that the nice way of saying it? That was a way of saying it. I'm just saying. I mean, my And then they look like, I don't understand why these kids are doing this. I'm like, you don't. You don't understand. I'm just going to ghost her. Listen, my poor son, at, Oof. I, I ha- he's almost 16. Yeah. And he is a bleeding heart. Oh man. Love him to He's death. Fucked. He's so emotional. Hashtag fucked. <laughs> Hashtag, fucked. <laughs> Hashtag, Hashtag not so tears. blessed. Yeah. But Hashtag's yeah, crying I, in your he, pillow. I mean, he comes to me and he's like, Mom, guess who watched my Snapchat last night? Oh fuck. And we <laughs> Ye who shall not be named yeah. on national yeah. air. Don't but I'm it. like, don't I insert name here. Or he's like, home. yeah. And I'm, they they can't. That could be like. Can we talk about that? Oh God, just for that's a, like, no, we're why on the show. Can't? Now listen. I had a guy yesterday or two days ago. He said, "Yeah, we posted this thing, and this guy commented, blah blah blah, blah and he should just mind his business." It's like, oh, mind his business. You put it on the fucking internet for all to see, or at least on the Snapchat. Same thing. You know what I mean? You put it out there for everybody to Still fucking the internet. see. Like you know, you can block people. You know, you can like curate this. You can curate your life. Yes. I don't know if people understand that, and I, I've definitely understood that. I don't respond to people like I've learned so much this summer. Like I used to feel like I had to respond to everything because I didn't want to let somebody down. Oh, now yeah, I just don't that, care. Right? Yeah. I just don't care. You'll be okay. I promise. You won't wilt up and die. Learn this. But like when they put things out, like he could block her, block her. So what he told me is that he can't block her because <laughs> she blocked him, but they're still in a group chat. But like I, I've yeah, done this whole, chat. listen, Did I've you think done we're this. Grandma's again. like, we don't know how to do this. Again, whole, like, if I were to go for my PhD, now would be the time. Because, I like, I'm, like, this close. I just need to decide what my, like, thesis would be. Me. Could be in a, <laughs> Thomas. Fuck. <laughs> Hashtag fuck. D- diagnosis question oh, mark. Oh, man. We don't have time. 
I don't have time for that. I love you, but I don't have be time. Be brutal. <laughs> it would be so bad. Ooh. But this whole, I have had so many conversations about sharing information this summer. It's, it's a, it's a real thing. Sharing location, red receipts. I've been asking people since our last show. Oh my God. I've been asking people that like, do you have locations on? And, and some people are like, fuck no. No. And other people are like, yes, of course. What if something happens, Thomas? Who, what? You know what I told what? a lady? Listen. No. Let me tell you what Obviously, I told lady? Obviously, my opinion brutal, is right? pretty strong. <laughs> it was brutal. She's like, well, what if you, what if something happens? I go, I know where to find a dead body. The morgue. I mean, they looked at me. I go, "What do you want?" Like it's crazy. Room. Like someone a, will call you. Just admit, I promise. People, I don't watch the news oh. of things that happen in Philadelphia, you know, New York, no. Seattle. Yeah, like somebody care. will call me. Yeah. So when people don't know how to block people, or they refuse to block people. And I've been there. I, I I've definitely been there, and I've learned. Like I don't care. I had a girl the other day say that this guy hit her up uh, somewhere, and. Her social media doesn't mention anything about being married. And next thing you know, he's getting... It, she, but she is married. No, she's not married. Oh, okay. Some dude hit her up, friend requested her, whatever. She's single. Okay. And he, uh, like, she liked a picture. Like normal people do when they're starting to flirt with each other or starting to do whatever. That was her motive? I don't know. I think she might have mm. just liked a picture. Some people just like pictures. I don't know. I quit doing that a couple years ago. <laughs> I've learned my fucking me, lesson. Like, I'm not sure. doing that shit anymore. And I I've don't like it. the opposite sexes no. picture no. unless they're no. like with their partner or their children or like something or that is single. so yeah, right. She's yeah. single. So and okay. she thought he was More single. More power to you. Well, next thing you know, she's getting a message from his wife. Oh, and she didn't forward. respond to her. She sent it to him and didn't say anything else. I go, did you unfriend him? She's like, well, no. And I go, you should unfriend him. And I saw her struggle with it. And it baffled me a little bit. And I was like, you should unfriend Why? him. Why? Why should she unfriend Because she's being a Riddle catty me girl. This. I love her. I do. Yeah. She's, a, she's awesome. You know what I mean? She's feisty. But, you know, she's she's a nice girl. I watched Did her grow up. Did she know he was married? You know? No, not until the wife ma- messaged her. What I need to know the context. So I'll go. I'll, of the message. Oh, like, hey, I need to know how you know my husband. One of those messages. And sir, I went to high school with him. <clears throat> she didn't. He just friend requested her on Facebook. Uh, okay. Because I'm like, I wouldn't unfriend. Like, immediately somebody came to mind. No, no, no. That she is really not super him. active on Facebook, but every. Every once in a blue moon pops up. I like his stuff all the time. I'm married with children. Yeah. He's married with children. But you're liking pictures of him and his wife, right? Only. Yeah. Ever. Isn't that crazy? Like, if it's not, if it is not, if it is not the opposite sex this is with an I, animal, a child, or a significant a other. Yeah. So this is my thing. This is where I struggle as humans. How authentic are we ever living our lives? Oh, Thomas. Yeah, it's gross, ain't it? I have, so my new, so honest to God, ironically, I have started complimenting people on being unapologetically, unapologetically authentic. Whew. Like, yeah. and I, I have been that way, but I am not consistently you that way. You had to way. tone it down. You have to. I, if you don't tone it down, people, people hate you. People want to squish you. That's that's the words that I use. Is I, like, I and I don't mean so, to be cliche of no, like I, you're too much, be less, like whatever. But like, I I know that I can be intense. I know that I can be annoying. I know that I can be too much. But like, too much for who? I don't I don't want you in my circle. And so this this. whole whole entire summer I have very strategically and intentionally taken a step back and I know you and I have spent hours on the phone to say if you are not in my corner cheering me on I don't want you anywhere near me no and I I don't want you to co-sign my bullshit no I don't like I don't yeah I don't need people with a t-shirt on that says my name's throwing tomatoes at me it's like a good way to put it but Fuck you. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't need I'm somebody. I'm fortunate I don't have that much, but I will say this. People like to make me feel small. 
It's so easy. It's usually easy. somebody I'm dating. It's, it's so, not normally my friends. It is. It's so easy to have um, seasonal common? people. Is that common? S- yes. So I'm saying is it common for mates who... to constantly, like, I don't know if they know they're even doing it. No. they're And they're not, like, going with that, like, metaphor. Metaphor? I don't know. Sure. Like, it's not like they're standing in the stands feet yards away lobbing no. tomatoes at you. They're on the corner on the sidelines or like in like saying like, are you OK? I don't know. They might get you like, you know, like yeah. placing doubt and confidence in like this push or pull fight or flight shit. It's bizarre and like, to me. That because that if you is talked what about their I best friend that way, they would want to murder you. Die. And I mean, I I say that about one. Yeah. Like we we have had this conversation that I have a best friend. That's it. One best friend. There's probably three people that are like in my inner circle. Yeah. I that got like a crew. at 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 my most mature. Done. Like I mean, I like it doesn't matter if they called me. Whatever it was that they needed, that I would, I would just be there. Right. Outside of that, like you're an idiot. I love you. Call, I'll bail you out, but I'm not. I'm not embarking yeah. on I your. I think I'm thing. more like with with the mate thing. Like why you have to tear each other down, or you why? have to like because they have to make sure that you're on their level, or I, like a half a step below. I feel those like those are the ones that are dangerous. Yeah. It, it's it's frustrating. Like I feel like I'm mentally more aware and mentally more healthy than I've ever been, but I feel more dead inside than I've maybe ever felt in the same breath. It's the weirdest feeling where I'm just like in a weird influx of like I don't. I'm gray. I'm not. I'm not That's dark, so... but I'm not light. I'm just like I exist. I love my life. I love you know what I'm hashtag blessed. Um, I know I have a great life, but I, I don't know if I've turned off every valve Mm. where I'm just not feeling, you know what I mean? Where I'm just not, it's a weird whole conversation about that. So a, that's sad. And I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm not B. I I know you you are not sad. And so that's what I was going to say. We have sad moments, but I'm not like, I'm not devastated. Yeah. I told you, I think I told you like my clinical theory on like ASD and like if you're not happy, sad or mad, you're nothing. Yeah, I'm here. Like and so like that's Yeah. But like you have to like those are you your focus you're running off of a primary color wheel. You're not mad, you're not sad, you're not happy. So you're it's not that you're numb. You're just none of those three. It's weird. So by default, you're, I know. That, In that a recording be, studio, like you guys can't see this, but this is out here is a big ass recording studio. And it's the same thing. Like if sounds will cancel each other out, yep. literally there's nothing. Yep. And, and I, my clients that, that do watch this and do turn in, they'll be like, oh, she's told me that. <laughs> Cause I have like a small yeah. handful. It's, it's, I am, I am not a specialist, but that is something that, I individually have noticed that when I verbalize that yeah. people who are likely on the spectrum are like, Oh shit, that, <laughs> that like I, all of, all of the people that I interact with act like they have this whole rainbow, right. Of like all of the, you know, like think of the color wheel, right? Like all of these emotions. And I'm like, no, most people I've talked to, you can mix 200 have, some colors from yeah, three yellow, Red, blue. Period. That's, That's all you have. And like colors hues, intensity. No other colors. That's it. And and if they don't feel those things, there is a lack of emotion, which then they're just baseline. Not numb, not a zombie, just like yeah. at, at content. I'm, I'm Maybe? dude, listen, I, I sleep pretty good. I, I eat I good. Know. I exercise See, but good. That's what I mean. Like it could be a whole, a whole, we could do a whole season on that. But I think it's ironic this season because you are settling into whatever that like middle of your wheel will say is. Yeah. I have laughed, cried, yeah. mourn more in the last couple of months than I ever have. That's I ha I am so emotionally charged recently 
that like I I must be just giving it all over to you. Like, hey, just hold so like this for this a while. So like this season, listen, I would like when you're done to with it, think bring that it back. I would I would like to think that I will not cry this season, but I cannot guarantee that because I I am Yeah. I am actively working on bringing my walls down in order to be emotionally vulnerable, not for other people's benefit, but for my own. Yeah. Because I don't I I am in control of myself and my own safety and I am choosing not to give that to other people and sometimes that emotionally emotional boundary is important. Yeah. Just because I let my walls down doesn't mean that you can hurt me. I'm choosing to let my walls down. Yeah, I I definitely have no walls up. I'm just standing in the middle of a fucking field at this point. But I have definitely alienated myself to the point where it, there's not much getting lobbed at me anymore, which is good, you know. Cuz you're alone in the field. There's Alone. not even anybody out there no. on the field with you. No, I'm like in the middle of Badlands, just standing there. Huh. But I don't mind that. I know. But I will say this. I had a client the other day saying that, uh, you know, they're like, well, they understand I'm going through a lot of shit. I said, just because you're going through some shit don't mean you get to torture everybody in your life. I At said, all. I've had one of the hardest years of my entire life. Mm-hmm. And I will say this. That doesn't mean that everybody around me gets a shitty version of me. And I'm tired of people using that as an excuse to be a shitty person. Just because you're having a bad day, you should... If you want a strong family and you want strong friends, showing them how you can gracefully go through a breakup or gracefully go through a loss of any kind that irritates you, that normally you would fold in half and be a dick and be like, I'm having a fucking bad day. Okay, when you go to Burger King and somebody doesn't give you good service, don't be pissed because they, they're going through some shit. Yeah. Well, they're at work. Well, you're with your fucking loved one, motherfucker. Right. That's you know what I mean? So, like, I think we should be more accountable for that mm-hmm. and show people how to gracefully go through some shit. Because I will say this. My kids and my grandkids and my friends and family have not got a shittier version of me this year. They haven't. I'm That's loving with them. And I because I purpose it is yeah. 100% intentional because I owe it to them as the leader of our family that I owe it to them to show them that like, if my dad can do this through a very hard time, mm-hmm. anybody can, you know, or we can, we have that tool in our toolbox. Quit giving your kids shitty, fucked up, rusty tools and broken tools. Ooh. Ooh. Right. Cause that's what you're doing. <laughs> Give them good tools. <laughs> we need a notebook. Right. Future episodes. Right. But show them, you know what I mean? Because I'm going to tell you what, I've seen it. And my kids will always have that in their toolbox. They can pull that hammer out anytime they fucking want and go, no. Because it, learning how to explain it to the way that people can understand it. That's why this show even exists, because people told me, you have a way of explaining things mm-hmm. so most people can understand them. If you can justify being a dick because you're going through a breakup or you lost a job or your dog died or your cat died, and those are sucky things, and I've had all those things happen to me. Sure. Okay. It does not justify you being a shithead. You can say this. I need some time. I want to be alone. Cool. Yeah. But you're not allowed to be snappy and be shitty. Go eat some food. Take a walk in the fucking park Mm -hmm. and be around the people you actually love. Yeah. And if you think it's okay to have bad behavior, don't be surprised when people avoid you. Don't be surprised when your kids do the same thing. I have, we're going to kill people this year on this show because literally there's so many things that I've talked with people about that I can't wait to talk about. Quit doing dumb shit like being shitty to your parents and then wondering why your kids don't talk to you because you literally taught them uh, how to be shitty to their own, your own family. And, and generational stuff has come up a lot. Oh my God. I've watched it like crazy with people. Mm-hmm. And like, why won't my kid even talk to me? You know? And I'm like, you just told me how much you hate your own fucking dad yeah, or your own right. mother. You haven't had Christmas or a holiday with your parents. And and you wonder why your kids don't want to be around you? Seven years since your child was three. You they don't literally even, showed them like, how right, to yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, mm-hmm. I've told people, I'm like, are you oblivious to this? Because they are, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, a, lo- a lot of people, what I have <laughs> reframing positively reframing what I have found a lot this summer is people are motivated to be called on their shit and like it it is in my psychology today profile like I am blunt I am I am not the clinician for everybody I am right I don't see a benefit 
and beating around the bush. I'm not known to like offend people clinically, no. but like I don't, I just don't see it. And so when people come to me and they're motivated, it is often that like I, they share, I reflect, and then we both giggle. <laughs> and I'm like, you heard that, right? Like say, you say just that again. Say, say that, that again. one more time with your whole chest. Yeah. You have not gone to your parents for three years and now you're showing up with your girlfriend of three months and your mom wants to know who the fuck. Like, I, and like it's not weird. Right. It That is weird. Yeah. That is weird. Or it, they just want to know. Like, why are you They're offended by everything that somebody... They're genuinely curious. And I'm not one of those right. people like, everybody's so offended, but like, people get mad if somebody walks through your yard. Like, if there's no context... There is a couple dogs in my neighborhood that shit in my yard every day. I have two dogs now. Other people's dogs shitting them in a yard pisses me dogs. off. Like, being dogs. It pisses me off. I'm not going to lie. Right, but but like, they're just I, being dogs. Right. I, sure. It's just it, being like, dogs. And I, every day I have to be like, oh my God, they're just freaking dogs. They're Kids, just you're, dogs. You're, you're, you know how often squirrels shit in my yard? All day. All day. All every day. It doesn't bother me. All day. So like. Mike has actually got rid of every squirrel in his entire neighborhood. Michael. Yeah. It's crazy. He like traps them and he takes them to other neighborhoods. Okay. All right. It's weird. Well, but anyway, so yeah, like I have, I have had to work on a lot of intergenerational stuff due to boomers, millennials, Gen Z. Like, I mean, like a lot of, yeah, they claim a lot of this shit. expectations. It, it, the world is changing. Like that is something that is fundamentally true. It's real. And so, I very much like to work with young adults, millennials, and boomers, even if they're if they're open to it. I only have yeah. a couple, but like trying to understand how the world is changing and people who are open to like, let me understand. Or if you this want to have how, a relationship with your grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, this is how I was raised and this is new and I don't understand and I am not perfect. And so... And I'm that cross like generation of raised extremely hard yet seeing all the change and just Gen my X. life. Is that what you are? Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen, mm -hmm. you know, I was raised crazy. Like I was telling stories to my buddy's wife the other day and she's just sitting there like mouth open oh, and I'm just like talking the, and the I'm like. Whole, so it's boomers who are old, old school, yeah. pretty, pretty traditional, but like whatever. Mm. And then it's you and then it's me. And I'm at the like upper end of the millennials. I always joke that I'm like the worst millennial. I don't know shit. I don't want. I don't want to know shit. I don't want to know how to use anything. Like I'm at the top. I but was, like it's so I was hard until MTV. I loved MTV. You know what I'm saying though? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it was hard, and then you start seeing things differently. The world. Yeah. Then you saw the world. You start seeing things differently. Cable TV. Start mm -hmm. seeing things, but. I still have that respect for the boomers, but I also have empathy. I have empathy for both, but the younger people, yeah, older people complaining about younger people is just as much garbage as complaining about older people. But the older people I feel mad about. We've talked about it. Yeah. But we can do better. I've learned how to walk around that and like explain it to them better. I'm like, well, then why aren't you trying to understand it or explaining it better to the way they understand it? I mean, it's not that hard. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I have a couple right now that explained it super well. I think it was like last week or the week before that they were like, you know, Gen Z. They were like, just like every single generation that comes out has pros and cons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they changing the world in some ways? Absolutely. Like they are breaking barriers. They are... Yeah. Moving mountains so in some yeah, sure. Yeah. And in other ways, they're like Tearing dying on every single hill that they have identified. So you know, did like boomers. it's right. Right. Every so generation. did millennials, so did so did Gen X, so did boomers. Like everybody they yeah. have their their generational flair. Yeah. And like it's hard. Liter literally flares. Rick because flares, flares are <laughs> 
<laughs> flares are back. I wore flares, and I remember when I wore them. I've my seen mom them go was like, in and out hey. three times Listen, in my lifetime. I have lifetime. flares on right now. I love flares. Three times. I would. Three times in my I life. I will relish every time the flare comes in because I love a good flare. I love a good skinny jean. So, <laughs> uh, I've seen them three times. Go in that and out. Makes sense. Seventies. Yeah. Two thousands. Oh yeah, the Christian Aguilera days. Yep. No, See, that's, we were well, there. That's where I was. Pants. Oh, all the way down. So I, Jeez. I really enjoy the high rise, big bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what she's trying to explain, but Listen. that's cool. I'm a skinny jeans guy. Mm. I even like skinny jeans on girls. I kind of like athletic fit girls. Yeah. You know, that vibe. Um, actually, I, I would love like, to fit that I don't vibe. like any girls <laughs> right now. Um, I find it interesting. So, hey, we got a telephone number. We do. Where is it? It's right here. Oh, you still have it. Yeah, I still I have it. I want it. You want one? I do you want one. You can probably one. read yours Jay? without glasses. Yeah. Mike. So ready? Two, three, four, 200, five, nine, four, nine. We need to have, um, tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear on the show this season. Who do you want to see? Who do you want to see? If you want us to bring anybody back from last season, mm-hmm. vote for them. Do some dope shit. I what don't know. What kind of people? What kind yeah. of guests? I think we're going <gasps> to we not have, have quite, oh my God. Holy shit. Oh Yeah. We got to have that guy on. We're going to bring you on, oh, bud. Oh, Lord. Is it Gavin? Gavin. It was not Kevin. It was Gavin. So, Gavin, we're going to get Gavin. a hold of you for season two. Um, I will say this. We probably won't have as many guests as we did last season. We're probably going to try something a little different this year. Switching it up. This year, this season. <laughs> um, but we're going to try some different stuff. If you have some suggestions that are reasonable, cool. If you don't, keep them to your fucking self. Um <laughs> Or we could we I'm not read them and nice. just say those aren't cool. I'm not going to be nice this season. <laughs> just to let you know, it's a darker Thomas this season. Oh, Maybe next season I'm gonna try I'll to be, be nicer. nicer. She's all full of rainbows and butterflies. I am full of growth and promise. Yeah, yeah. I'm full of piss and vinegar. It's cool. Uh, who pissed in your chair? No, that's all. <laughs> no, we will. Nobody not really did that. I will say this. Me. There was some serious good growth this summer, but there's also some. I think because my brain's in overdrive right now of trying to unravel what we've been doing to each other over these years, and I think we can do better, and I'm losing my patience we? with it. The greater we? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think that in relationships, we should stop being so selfish and abusive and truly Absolutely. love each other a little bit more and treat people like we'd want people to treat our children. Mm. And it's super important, and quit demanding things out of people you can't explain why you need them. Mm. I don't feel like that's fair. If you can't define it, don't I think demand it's fair. it. No, it's ridiculous. That's that's Ooh, that's the basis. That it's the basis of a lot of mugs. super bad behavior. <laughs> and all it does is torture people. And if somebody was doing that to somebody you loved, you would be extremely upset with them. Yet you yeah. do it to your mate. And you do it to the mother and father of your children. You, somebody you love. Somebody that you trade gravy with. That you're intimate with. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is borderline disgusting. And honestly... Protect the brand. Love each other, man. Like, it's a big deal. I've learned a lot, man. And you really need to, like, be conscious of that shit. But you also need to give somebody grace as well if they're not understanding it. It doesn't mean you just lob off their head. You know? Yeah, that's fair. You have to, like, work through that. Because until someone understands it, they just don't understand it. Unless they're just being defiant, like, fuck you. But nobody, it's, okay, ready? This is what I, I, here's my new saying. Talking to somebody is like landing a plane. It is all about your approach. You can land a plane a lot of different ways, right? I don't know. I'm not a pilot. I'm going to assume you can land a plane. Literally nothing about okay. landing a plane. <laughs> you can land it very easily, calmly. Yeah, that's And fair. you can land it with straight on its belly and skid yeah. it across the entire fucking runway. What I suppose that's, that's you a can land a house for because the guy is going like this regardless. Right. Like, let me have it. Right. What do you right. got? Or you can okay. come in yeah. hot. Yeah. Or you can come in beautifully where everybody's like, that was a great landing. Yeah, right. So when you're talking to somebody, be conscious of how you're speaking to them. Because I don't know about you, but as soon as somebody comes at me hard, mm. it's instantly it hard does, back. I don't receive that well. In the way I was raised. In my best day. I don't care how nice I am. Mm-hmm. You come at me hard. If you come at me nice, I will talk to you. It's hard for me to get mad. Yeah. It, I, I would have to like create an emotional be reaction. Yeah. Right, yeah. 
But most of the time, it's like if they're being sincere and being kind about it. And here's the yeah. other thing. This is the best communication things I've, I've witnessed this summer. Don't tell people. Ask them questions. Ask them. Hey, is there a reason for this? Or what's going on with this? Mm-hmm. That hits a lot different than, you know, you fucking keep doing that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be pissed. Yeah. That hits totally different. So if you ask them like, hey, what's going on with this? What's going like if if somebody likes your friend's picture or your boyfriend or girlfriend's picture or somebody sends them a Snapchat, go, hey, should I be concerned about that or what's going on with that? Not who in the fuck is that? Well, I guess my th- my continued approach is if you have to ask that, like even you did. I have fantastic- people in my shop doing it to I each know. other, and I'm sitting there tattooing, you going, "What the had, fuck?" You did fantastic of like. W- taking an open approach but like at a certain point i would say even that as a clinician would be concerning i had i literally had a session this week already it is tuesday that we're recording yeah so yesterday had a whole couple's conversation about like do you trust your partner they're like yeah which i i would say 90 percent believe I, I believe, or I guess I think they Close believe enough. that 90%. Right. Of, yeah, right. Do you... You're not like this. <laughs> no. Like right I, in their I, face. Like, listen, they volunteered this information and they did not have to. Right. Like, they, so they brought it. Right. But I also asked them, like, do you trust this third party person? Because it's a mutual person. So even if lines were pressed by your partner, would the other person check them and they're like yeah absolutely i was like okay well that's a completely conversation a a completely different conversation than like what's going on they've been together for a lot of years yeah so i guess like i get to the point or have gotten to the point this this summer relationally we're like if we are to the point where we're saying hey what's this even i'm not saying it's too far gone like that that's like more than just a check engine light coming on. You think? I what if it's in if it's infancy? I guess it depends on the who initiated. It, no, I I renege. I don't even think I don't think so. Right. I think if you if anything throws a red flag in the column of infidelity. Right. Re- but if it's somebody else's actions? To, yes. Well, I mean, how do you... I, listen, I have... I will speak from personal experience. Like, my my husband, we have had multiple conversations about boundaries in regards to my boundaries. Right. Not his. But, like, hey, this, this situation poked or pressed a boundary of mine and mine are and yours are different yeah it did not cross his own boundaries like he he, he had his own, he had his own he didn't do anything wrong but right. it got a little too touchy for me right. so we sat down and had a conversation and then he moved his back mm. and i realized that like even though he moved his back it doesn't have to be a fucking electric fence like it's it's a soft it's, boundary. There is a lot of wiggle room from where my boundary is to like all the way over here where I would be like actually emotionally reactive. Gotcha. So I would say like yes, in most situations if you have to if you feel the need to bring to a person, hey, what is this? I would be curious as to what the underlying issue even is. Right. Are we talking about a message? How'd you see it? Did you go through their phone? There's a lot of things, man. Did it pop up on their screen? It gets real shaky right. real quick. Are you stalking their comments on their picture that somebody else posted? Spider web like, gets right. real big. I know. But like, if you posted a picture of you and I yeah. and didn't tag me, do you know, I 
I would have to go to your page, to your pictures to see who commented and then click on it and see. That's a lot. Like that's, that's that's doing a lot. That's shady. That's doing a lot. I'll say this. I had a young man in and he was nice and he was talking about summer. I was like, ah, how's your summer going? Like normal conversation. He's like, yeah. And he goes, I'm just kind of working on me. I said, bad breakup, huh? (laughs) <laughs> he looked at me. I was like, nobody says that shit. It's like the tag on your t-shirt. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, come on. Working on me. Yeah. <laughs> Just taking some time for me. Yeah. And we were talking about stuff, and he's a nice guy. He's like, I go, it's hard to, you know, is it, are you having a hard time finding some? He's like, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I said, you, he's a real nice, you get to tell he's a super nice guy. And I go, mm-hmm. are you the back burner for a lot of girls? And he's like, what do you mean? I go, how many girls message you complaining about their shitty boyfriends? And he Uh. just looked at me like this, like, fuck, get out of my head. I go, how many times have you picked up a girl at a bar because she was too drunk and somebody left her? And then the next day you checked on her. She didn't even message you to thank her. And she was, or thank him. And she, he was like this. I go, it's happened more than once, huh? And he goes, oh my God. I go, yeah, stop being that. Quit watering plants that aren't yours. And I, I explained it to him best. I said, you know why? You think you're being nice and it's entertaining. Sure. And you're being kind. But I'm going to tell you what, you're going to meet a girl you really love and you really like and you enjoy to be around and your Snapchat's going to go off from some girl that literally is, doesn't mean anything to you and she's going to go, who's that? And you'll be like, oh, it's this girl. How do you know her? I don't really know her. Why is she messaging you? Mm. And you're not going to have an answer and you didn't do anything. But guess what you are going to have to do? Mm. It's I go, it's like having drugs in your car that belong to someone else and you don't do drugs. Well, right. It's in like it's not it's like your friend's friend yeah. that left him in the back seat. Yeah. Not even your passenger that's like your And the cops that, are like, like what's up with these drugs? Like, They're not like, mine. Didn't even know they were back there. Right. So I told him that and he was like, "Oh shit." And I was like, "Stop it." Just I said, "You're going to literally yeah. Put yourself in a position. I have another thing that I was talking to a young man about, and we'll finish up with this. I've watched him. I'm working on whole sleeves, so I've seen him grow. You know, mm-hmm. as a young man, and he he's from a little bit southern of here, and he wants to buy some land and build a house mm-hmm. and all this stuff, and he's doing well. He works, you know, at a big company down there, and he does well. And he gets more serious every time. And the, like when he was like, hey, what do you think of this land? What do you think? And I was like, man, you're like talking to a realtor. Like shit's real. Yeah. yeah. And I go, what's your plans for this? He's like, I just want some land. I'm going to build a house. Blah, blah, blah. I like to hunt. I said, do you hunt now? He's like, yeah, I can hunt on like 300 acres. I was like, what do you think five what, acres is going to do for you? Why do you want this land? Right. But I, but okay. But where I he's it, from, right, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a, a status thing. I would well, it's, it's, yeah. it's not even just a status. It's even more. It's expected. It's it's yeah. part of right. your... Where is your... Yes. Yeah, I get it. And I go, don't build a house, bud. I go, do you plan on... Do you want to get married one day? He's like, yeah, I'd love to get married and you know, have kids one day. He's not dating anybody. But he's like, you know, he's just one of those boys that, you know, yeah, they get right. married, they want to have, yeah. you know... Here's my you checklist. You grew up in kind right. of that Yeah, area. I did. My dad's side. My- yeah, normal. And it's it's beautiful, you know what I mean? And and I go, don't, don't build a house. And he goes, what? I go... If you build a house before you get married, you're going to end up selling the house that you loved and having to rebuild a house with her. And he's like, wait, what? And I go, (laughs) yeah. Thomas, you're so jaded. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. And I said, and I don't blame her. Okay, I don't blame her because he's like, but what if it's the house I always want? I go, you always wanted. But if you want your wife to be happy, she's going to need to be in a house that she Uh loves. And he just looked at me and I was like, I'm just just put a trailer on the lot. You know what I told him to do? What? I said he's young and he likes to have fun, drink beer, and drive a side by side. I go go stay at a damn campground, dude. Go rent one of those campgrounds and have a great summer until you find somebody you want to settle with. Because well, if be you like, can live with a girl land. in a camper right. all summer and y'all don't want to kill oh each God, other, we didn't even talk about that last season, and I know you wanted to until you travel with somebody. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying though. But if you stayed, if a girl came and stayed at your camper every week with you, yeah. and y'all don't want to kill each other. She's probably dope. You probably love the shit out of her. You probably build a house with her, not fight with her too much. I know. I'm trying to. I'm gonna have to process that. Yeah, you know that shit's true. That's what well, I know. I got so, you. No, I. I there's obviously exceptions, but. Yeah. If I don't. All right. To be continued. Yeah. If you built your own house, I would like to believe that it's different, but you are not wrong in the fact that nope. men and women have different priorities and goals. I know a very 
a very consistent theme, a golden thread that I have seen in clinical work relationally is if you had a home with another previous partner. Stupid. That's hard. You yeah. know, like. Stupid. Also, so I had my dick in like, someone else. I'm going to be blunt. I know. It's the dumbest shit in the world. It's trying to control Same. somebody. Listen, Same I understand phone, why. Right? <laughs> I understand why you would want. Just put it on the screen. They yeah, could fucking read. Just put it on the screen. So listen, I understand why a woman would want a house with someone. I truly do. And I think it, it is a part of this whole growth. And we've been taught that you build a house together. Nah. You Sometimes do. it's just not compa- Like, listen, I love my husband to the fucking he- heavens and back. I hate our house with the passion right. of the devil. <laughs> like, right. we have seven people that live in our house. Yeah. Our house is not built for seven people. Most houses aren't. And, like, no houses are built for seven people. No. But, like, he bought it when it was just the three of them. Made sense. I was, we had a house of four. So he bought it and was super proud of it. And now I'm like, this doesn't, like, you walk in, the coat closet isn't big enough, the living room is Nothing stupid, is. It's, a, it's a ranch, the basement, the bathroom, like, everything. Yeah. So I understand. And listen, yeah, I do right. understand it because the woman also wants to have skin in the game. She doesn't want to be felt like she could be, you know, kicked yeah. out. I, I mean, under- I dude, can, right? I'm not saying I, I was that. just telling it. I wasn't being a dick. I was like, if you I was actually from a loving place. I was like, if you want to honor your mm-hmm. wife. You go. I, I meant it. I, you like, could, just you put could a trailer say, on I the, bought on this the land. I bought this land. Yeah. But I'm not going to build a house until we do it together. And I, you know, I'm not saying that in a shitty way, but he just looked at me like, he goes, but I'm pretty stubborn. I said, then you shouldn't get Listen, fucking married. Then just, then build your house. And tell her to fuck <laughs> off. Build your house, get yeah. a dog, be have single. a side by side, you'll be fine. Yeah, have a side piece, you know. Right. A side by side piece. But I, I wasn't saying it in a shitty way. I don't want to come across like no. a shitty way, but like, right. honestly, these are things that we don't talk about or think about because yeah. it, as, a, as a man, you would think that like, okay, I'm going to do this and a girl will find me attractive and find me more as a high... Which is, a high, is true, but they don't realize that that's like step A. Yeah, then they want to dismantle you, rebuild you how they want you. It's like, those are nice Legos. Even, I like what you built it. there. Hold on. Even in the in a, reef, a positive reframe way, speaking from personal experience, like I dated my husband who had a house, had a job, like, and and those were things that I was looking for. Like, I don't, listen, I own a couple vehicles in my own home and have a master's and like all of these things. And I don't, I'm not looking for a project. Been there, done that. Right. He checked all my boxes and then we kind of like evaluated, let's look at your house for seven people. Let's look at my house for seven people. It just had to be a little bit better. Damn it. Just this. Yeah. And I'm not saying much. it wasn't, I, I wasn't even being shitty about it, but no, I w- right. I'm saying this because I can save you a lot of time and money. Yes. Like just don't, my parents, my parents who got divorced did it the right way. Yeah. They bought a, bought a plot, put a, a single wide, like put a trailer on their lot, lived in there while they built their house. Yeah. And that would be, that would be perfect for him. It just hundred percent. Live on your land so that you're not paying something else. You know what I mean? I was like, dude, you're doing it. Tell him to live on a camper. Yeah. That's what I told him. On his land. But I was like, dude, I told him it'd be fun at the campground. Hot boy summer. Yeah, it'd be fun at the campground. Your friends. Full circle. Guess what? Hot boy summer. No DUIs. (laughs) That's true. You get to hang out at the campground. And he's an outdoors guy. He likes to fish and stuff. Oh, so so maybe there would be somebody who would he enjoy. Exactly. But I just. I tinder, want people to be more honest men. with people, like, you know, honest in a way, like honest with yourself, not with the other person. Be honest with yourself, uh, that's like what you whole, need. That's so much harder. Yeah. Because, mm, again, we put it off on everybody else. Season. We yeah. put it off on everybody else. We do. All right. Well, this is uh, the beginning of season two. We got some things coming. We're going to be Big doing things. some advertising on here this season, which is pretty dope. <laughs> some funny advertising, I have a hunch. Um. Mike and Justin are holding it down in there somewhere. Put the number up. There's a number down here. Text us. There it is. <laughs> yeah, send Ta-da. us a text message. Um, tell us what you like. Um, what you don't like. Actually, I don't really care. Um, don't share that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really. Um, it's going to be a very spicy season this, this season. So, <laughs> Kelly... 
Thanks for coming back for season two. Oh, well, sure. It looks Glad a little different here. in here. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get a little deeper than we did last season and uh, go a little harder because it's time. It's almost 2024. Let's get our shit together. I mean, yeah. no time like the present. All right. Um, be good. Be nice to each other. Quit being fucking assholes. <laughs> Have Thanks, a good night. Guys. See ya.